So guys, we're gonna talk about ways you can fail a weld test. So this is the lucky seven things you can do to improve your chance of walking away with a su successful weld test. Keegan, I would say first and foremost is the mindset. How do you get yourself wrapped around a, a new place, a big plant, a different QC, and how do you get it out of your head? What's your mindset? That's probably the most important thing about weld testing is the mindset. Because a lot of people, they get so in their head and they get rattled up and their nerves are through the roof and they freak out. And the best advice that I can give for getting out of, outside of your head and getting a right mindset is do a little bit of practice. So practice for the weld test, what you're going to be doing, but don't do too much practice. Don't weld every single day before the weld test. Just do maybe one or two days of practice and give yourself a couple of days break. And then another thing is don't think about it as a weld test. Okay. Just pretend it's another weld on a job. Right. Just weld it. That's what I always tell the students here at KWI. That's what I tell people on the job. Just weld. Don't right. think about it as anything. Just make a weld. All right. So we got that mindset down. What about going into the job, the, your self-presentation, the way you look? Does it matter if, if your bandana matches your shirt and the same color as your beanie? Or does it, who cares? Um, and you know, it, it comes down to personal preference on that. But you wanna you wanna have a good presentation. You mm -hmm. wanna look nice. You wanna probably wear your best clothes to the weld test and present yourself well for that QC or the weld testing person. Because, you know, whenever they see you, they wanna know that you're a welder. They wanna, you know, make sure that you're not just another Joe Blow down the street. So just present yourself well. And when you first get there, just let them know that you're there for the test and just, yeah. Yeah, a quality shirt. You don't wanna walk in, your shirt's all burned up and hanging off of you. Right. It may look like you've been welding, but it, but it also may look like you're unsafe and you've been on fire too. So. Right. All right, so, so we got the right mindset. You're, you're looking like a welder, you got your tools, your PPE, everything's ready to roll. What's important about the fit up? Can you fail a weld test on fit up? You can. Sometimes if you fit up a weld, a weld test wrong, the company or the QC may have a really high number of people testing, so they're looking for anything to bust you on. Mm -hmm. So if you fit up something bad or you don't have the right tacks in place where they want them, you can bust. So that's why it's important whenever you're fitting up stuff, go to the testing person or the QC and ask them how many tacks or even if it matters where you put your tacks. Yeah, and the gap is important too. I know there are certain contractors out here that won't allow more than a certain size gap. And I know of personally people who have failed because they had a fish eye in a tack. Mm -hmm. So if there's a lot of people testing for that job, especially if it's big money, they don't want to waste time on people that can't even tack the pipe together. Exactly. So make sure your fit up's <clears throat> right and you check with your tester to make sure that you're doing everything right that you should be. And if they don't say anything, then fair game. Do what you're used to and don't change anything. Right. Okay, so we, so we, we got a good mindset. We're dressed to go. The fit up's been approved. That's been checked off by the QC. We all know that first whale's the hardest and the most nervous. What are some things that, that you've seen people do, mistakes on the route that you can overcome? Some mistakes on the route that I've seen is they change something. So they think, oh, this machine's different. I'm gonna turn it up or turn it down. So, you know, whatever temperature you're used to running, run that. Don't change it just for a weld right. test. And also the thickness of the pipe. Sometimes you may need to run hotter or colder depending on how thick it is. And, you know, whenever you put your root in, if you mess it up, you need to fix it. Don't just put the root in and have the QC come look at it. So what I mean is, if you put a root in and you look at it and it doesn't look good, do not go get the QC. Fix that before you get the QC because they do not want to have to come and check your root and it not be the way they want it, okay? Right. So I have an experience, I did a weld test for a company and I had to cut the root out four times and I got the QC four times to look at it and even though I knew it was kind of iffy and they said to me, if you come get us one more time, we're gonna bust you. So I sat there and fixed it and made it right until, and I remember looking at it, I was so nervous, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is good and I cut it out a bunch and made it happen and right. they passed it the next time, but do not, get the QC 
on the root unless you know it's good. Right, and when you go get that QC, it doesn't matter which pass it's on, right. you don't want to point out the flaws. No. Nope. I see new students do that all the time here at KWI. You'll walk in to check out the, the root, and they'll say, well, right here at seven o'clock, I missed a tie-in, and I got a little piece of cold wire here. On the job site, a lot of times these QCs are in a hurry, so they're gonna come in, do a quick visual on your route, and then they're banging out the door. So don't start calling out your flaws and giving them extra things to look at. Exactly, you just wanna get every bit of help you can on a weld test, because you might have drove 700 miles to take a weld there test, you so you do not wanna hurt yourself in any way. All right, so we got the route in. Now we can take a little breather. We gotta fill this thing up. What are some mistakes that, that maybe you have made or you saw people overcome in just filling out the pipe? Well, the biggest thing is filling out the pipe. A lot of guys will use one eighth wire. Now here's the thing with one eighth wire, whether it's an alloy or whether it's carbon, most people bust because of lack of fusion with one eighth because you have to burn one eighth wire a lot hotter mm. than 332. Now the thing is the test is a coupon. So, the temperature you have to run one eighth at is a lot hotter than you know 332 obviously but when you're welding on regular pipe out in the field the heat goes somewhere so you can crank it up and burn one eighth comfortably whenever you try to crank it up and run one eighth on a test the coupon will get really really hot and you may start losing the quality of your weld or you might have okay. to go faster to make it happen and then you might miss something so i always tell people if you're going to run one eighth just make sure that you let it cool down or just run 332 for a lot of your fills. And that's what I do. When I test, I run 332 all the way out okay. on my fills. Right. All right, so you got this thing filled up the QC's been in. They've given you the, the go ahead. And in some cases, some companies will say, well, we're gonna look at the root and then come and get us when you got it capped. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that cap. What's gonna kick your butt there? On the cap, just like <clears throat> surface porosity, or you miss some of the wall like on your cap so there's little things that you can do to fix that so porosity you're gonna have to grind it out obviously or if you miss the wall on the cap you got to grind that whole bead off and redo it again and there's a lot of different things you can do you can take a file you can take a wire wheel and kind of blend it but something that i do is when i'm prepping my coupon i grind the whole outside of that coupon that way, if you're welding it and you miss something, you can just knock it off and it'll all blend together. So you really don't want any defects or grinding marks on your cap, but there's things that you can do to prevent that. Right, right. So I've saw a lot of people who will bust on a cap because the cap is too low. Yeah. You know, you gotta be really cautious. I think if you're filling and you know how you're gonna cap the thickness of your bead and the speed of your travel, you may have to get your fill plast completely flush. Right. Other people who would weld a little bit slower may have to get that fill pass a little bit concave. Mm -hmm. So don't bust because you're under feel. Right. Don't bust because you're over feel. Exactly. All right, so the final thing I wanna talk about, number seven is probably the most important. What about the final instructions? What's the QC gonna tell you and how are you gonna react to some different things there? Right, and so your final instructions, they're gonna come look at it, they're gonna check it to see if it's good or not. And then they're gonna have you either take it over and get it cut up or take it over and cut it yourself. So whatever they say whenever you're finished with the weld test is super important because, you know, some people they like to cheat on weld tests and a lot of funny stuff can happen after a weld test. So you just need to make sure and keep your eye on your coupon and do whatever they say whether you gotta cut it up or whether they take it over to their bandsaw and they'll cut it for you. In a lot of cases, the companies will cut it and bend it for you. So that mm -hmm. takes a lot of the issues out of the way. So if you're cutting your own coupon uh, and you see a little something in there, are you gonna chase it before you turn in that strap or are you gonna turn in that strap? Because we all know if you chase it and it gets too thin, then it doesn't qualify. Right, and sometimes depending on how your QC is, you can ask them like how thick you want the pieces, how thin you can get them and whatnot. And like I said, some QCs are strict, some aren't strict. So, you know, if you got a QC that you're pretty cool with, you know, they'll let a lot of stuff slide a lot of the times. So that's something you just have to feel out and find out for yourself, you know, if this QC is, you know, lenient or strict. So depending on that, depends on what you're gonna do. Right, you know, if you're doing some alloys, color may come into play too. There are some companies that want a certain color level mm -hmm. chart to even pass visual before we go any further. Right, and that comes down to letting it cool as well. Whenever you're taking a test before the cap, you may need to let it cool. Mm -hmm. So 
especially with like stainless or alloys, if they want color, you're gonna have to let it cool all the way down. Or one time I was testing um, and they want a color, we just grabbed that air hose and sit there and cooled it off. So there's okay. different things you can do. And that all comes back to making sure what the QC wants. All right. So remember, if you're taking a weld test, follow these lucky seven steps to be successful and land that job. So hopefully you guys like this video. We'll be putting out more videos on our YouTube channel, so subscribe to that. And also, check out our website. We have links and we also have shop for clothing and a virtual tour. Until next time, see you there.